GamerDude2088, and welcome back to another episode of How Strong Can We Get? My progression guide, where we do one video a month about my progress personally in the game. So we got a few things to talk about, so let's get right into it. So the first thing we want to do is go over into the Glyph Dungeons and talk about some of what we've been doing there. Currently, since I am the anti-meta, I've been working on strength. Strength has been the first dungeon I've been progressing through. We had already cleared through uh, strength 10 pretty decently. First one we cleared all the way through 10. The, our current, the current status of our team, you notice 8 is highlighted because that's the one that I currently auto farm. Don't have to watch nothing. Don't have to focus anything. But this is the team that we've been using. This same team took us all the way through 9 and 10. And we can do those, but they're not reliable on on that level yet so we've been doing a lot of farming just trying to improve our glyphs and I'll go over the units and the glyphs later on in this video but we've been doing what we can to improve our glyphs just so we can uh, go into that next level that next phase and, and into the strength because that is our current focus what uh, the normal meta no, but the, what the normal meta uh, generally is people farm wrath first which we have cleared that through 10 uh, as well, we did that after we completed strength, and for that one in particular, that one I still would like farm on eight or so, but I think I want to just kind of remap and come up with a whole new team for that one, and I believe our team is this right here, yeah, this is our team for, for Wrath, and, uh, they generally get the, uh, get the job done. Uh, also, going all the way past 8, I will still have to, like, focus boss. I have to make sure that I focus boss only in order to get the victory because we can pretty much lock the boss from getting turns mostly uh, with this team just because of the Fire Necro being our main unit to get the job done, you know. And finally, the Benefit Dungeon, which we haven't really did much. We're currently on 10, and since it has an immunity, I kind of got to just keep playing around with my units to uh, to complete this one. I tried a couple refreshes, but I'm just going to end up just going back into the drawing board and building a team later when we're ready to farm uh, Benefit, but I don't see a reason to right now because we don't need any of the glyphs that Benefit uh, provides as of yet. But this is the team here that we're using, I believe. It's them and... Bam, there we go. So, Feisty Fire Necro is in every team. He does everything because he's great in every place in this game. Don't necessarily mean you have to use him everywhere, but he is uh, decent everywhere and amazing in some uh, in other areas. Areas. But, uh, yeah, this is the team that we're kind of using uh, for this one. And mostly trying to use the the uh, Earth Dragon as a tank so he can focus down since he's, the, the, uh, since he's um, the attribute disadvantage. But we don't have really any skill-ups or anything into the Earth Dragon, so he's not at his fullest potential. We might do better with skill-ups. And then uh, I still don't believe that this team is the best for it so I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and come up with something else later when I'm ready to farm it but right now it's just not quite important so that's where we are so far when it comes to the, the dungeons uh, personally and I can I can auto B8 across the board like I can just put an auto walk away get something to eat hang out come back it's done um, and they they clear most of the time, so that's that's cool. But anything past that, then I gotta like focus boss. Make sure once we get to the boss stage, we focus, and that's a, that's about it for for that. So let's move on to the next thing we need to talk about here. So we've done quite a bit of summoning, and I'm still kind of behind on summon video. So I'm probably going to skip that part about everything that we summon because you're going to kind of see it anyway. But we've uh, we've done quite a bit of summoning, and we still got videos to pump out for you guys to see. Uh, you know, all the pools, my excitement, my disappointment, and all that great stuff. So we're not really going to talk about everything that we summon, but we're going to move on into the next uh, section here. So far, 
for our next part here, I want to talk about the the units that we kind of showcase for our dungeon teams and what we're doing with those, uh, their glyphs and what we're doing. We're going to start here with our uh, Blazing Fla Faceless here. And you can see he's on a meditation build with a broken set. Glyphs as the second second build. Now I remember uh, somebody was telling me that uh, they don't think Broken Set is really that great in this game, and I probably agree with them. But I couldn't pass up on the the stats that these provided versus uh, trying to put a full set of something on because it just wasn't giving me the stats that I wanted. Because so, I mean I need a lot of accuracy, a lot of a lot of. Uh, like a decent amount of speed for where my units are and making sure that it was tanky enough and, and I mean I was meeting those requirements with the stats that was being provided by those glyphs in particular and not trying to focus on just having a full set of something because I just didn't have that it just wasn't happening so I was able to achieve the stats that I wanted from them based off of that uh, based off of that alone now, I've said this many times in stream as well as just in my Discord and all about uh, the Fire Necro. Great unit. OP. Insane. A bitch to build because he needs way too many stats. He has the second, ba second highest base speed in the game, which is uh, 87. I believe 88 is the highest in the Fire the fire uh, vampire has that speed. I'm not sure if anything else does because I don't know all the units and all the stats and all that stuff yet. But he, f based off of his passive and the rest of what his skills does, he needs he needs to have as much crit rate as possible during when you want to hit that 100% mark so he can always land crits so his passive can always activate. And, and then a decent amount of accuracy. He doesn't have to have max accuracy, just decent enough to be able to land his debuffs uh, when he does crit and just to be effective. And since he's already fast and then he involves into speed, you want to make him fast. He gets so many turns and if he does his job correctly, he will always, he will always get extra turns because his bar will refill halfway after he gets a turn. So he's already halfway full once his turn starts over. So my general rule of thumb with him is to make him faster than the attack bar booster because he's already gonna be he's already gonna be halfway there. So if you have the attack bar booster go first and their speed is not that bit not that far apart from each other, it's just oh it's just overlapping speed that will be wasted. So have by having him going first and attack booster going next, I have times where he'll move three, four, even five times before any other unit moves after that so that's kind of um, how I use my uh, fire necro and then he he is gonna need some decent HP and defense which mine don't have I did have him built tanky at first especially for a second skill because the second skill hits pretty hard if you build him for a lot of HP which is kind of necessary but right now his hexes I'm running Double speed, double crit, and I was running double accuracy, but I got an HP and the accuracy, trying to make him a little more tankier than what he was. Uh, because having just 7,000 HP, I mean, it's sometimes he'll get one-shotted if he gets attacked, and I definitely don't want that. Now for my Fire Kitty, my Fire Kitty is basically my farmer, does uh, the job for farming when I need to level up things, and... You see, I got him on a strength and and uh, life steal build. Still got lots of work to do with him on his. Cause I like to have crit damage, especially because his, cause he works so good off of crit damage. But I don't have the crit that I need for him on the glitch that he has. So that'd be something that I have to work towards in the future. Um, and right now, that's just not the current focus. He does a good job as is. I mean, he has a decent amount of HP to to boot. Uh, okay, speed. He, uh, uh, I need. I definitely need a lot more crit because he doesn't crit as much as I would like. Definitely not like Summoner's War. You can have like 50% crit and they land crits like crazy. This game, if you're not as closest to 100%, I would say probably 89, maybe hit the least on... Uh, 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 on um, your crit percent in this game 
or you're just probably not about to land a lot of crits. And it sucks when he miss crits because he hits really hard, especially in arena. Okay, we're not going to go through everybody, just, just mostly the units that we're using for our strength team because our strength team is the most important because that's where our progression is right now. It's focusing strength and nothing else for that for that uh, part. Um, so let's move on into our healers. I got the meditation and vitality build. I don't have anything better than than what I have on her currently because I want I definitely want to move her off of vitality. She might be on double meditation. Uh, once I get something better, or I'm, or if I can just run something broken, if I have something better than these two, but this one I'm not sure about changing because this was just a really good glyph in terms of what I need for her. I mean, it's not it's not extremely the best. I mean, honestly, this glyph is shit. Okay, let me just be completely honest. This glyph is shit, but it had resistance. And I was upset about that, but I knew I was going to find a place for it. And, you know, cleansers should always have high resistance because their job is to make sure everybody don't get debuffed. And I really don't have enough on her. Um, not quite yet. So I'm definitely going to be looking to improve her resistance because I want her to have 100% resistance because it sucks when she gets debuffed. And it still happens quite often because 66% is garbage. So, it's still a lot of work that I have to do for her. And then for my main healer, uh, my Earth Pixie, which I love to death. She's not as tanky as I would like, not as fast as I would like. And she could have more resistance. Uh, probably even more accuracy. More accuracy. Uh, her accuracy is pretty much just because of what I had. I really wasn't trying to get accuracy. I mean, her second skill needs accuracy, but it's mostly the third skill is what I'm working her for. And what's it? Uh, yeah, so it's just her second skill that I have for her. And I want to get her off of Vitality as well, but I don't quite have anything better than that. And, this, and the stats on those are pretty decent for what she needs. And uh, since we are focusing... Uh, strength she will probably end up being on some uh, meditation build as well even though she doesn't necessarily need meditation because her s cooldowns on her skills are relatively uh, low and I have her max skilled as well speaking of units and skill oops back that up speaking of units and skill ups uh, we kind of threw that let's talk about the skill ups we have on our uh, units in our team, in, in the team, so we see he's max skill, wasn't really trying, really wanted just to max out the third skill on him, but uh, wasn't fortunate for that, so he ended up getting max skill. Uh, I was so fortunate for him to just get all my skill ups pretty much into his second skill, since he doesn't have anything for the third, so I'll probably end up going back later on and uh, skilling up his first skill, but it's really not necessary because we'll, it's because we're not worrying about his physical damage per se because his damage come through curse, and that's his biggest thing. Uh, right now, we are currently skilling up the Fire Kitty because uh, we want to get that third and that second skill max, but it's been doing a horrible job at that, and the skill ups that we have been... I think what it rolled into first skill twice and we barely got one into each of those skills and we don't have really any fodder for fire since we've been skilling up so many fire units as for further as the water holy sister we was fortunate in skill ups for her we was able to get the third skill max which is really important this is why she's on meditation because even max is still a five turn cooldown and in my personal belief if you if your cooldowns is five turn five turns or more you definitely need to have meditation on that unit because you want to have those skills if they're really that good as up as often as possible so that's kind of important so we're definitely going to end up going back and putting some more skill ups into her so we can have her second skill uh, as powerful as possible, but we don't quite need that yet. 
Uh, she's possibly going to be my next five star since she's the attribute disadvantage for strength. And since we're focusing strength, we want all those units to be as strong as possible. Pixie was another one that ended up becoming max skill when the only thing we really wanted was the third skill to be max. But they all ran into the first skill and then the rest of them ran into the second skill before we was able to get one into the third. So it happens. Uh, got to charge it to the game. Can't really be too upset at that or anything like that. So we do got uh, a bunch of other units glyph, but we're not going to go off into those units for this video too much. Um, but I guess we can move on into the next phase here. So let's talk about Arena Arena. Okay, so right now I'm in Bronze 2. I've been been in Bronze 2 for the last three weeks because I just wanted to stay there and farm. I didn't really want to push or anything. But now I'm at a point where I got decent units. And I kind of want to uh, push up. This is uh, my current AD. I guess I'll go back and show off the glyphs on the units that I haven't uh, talked about for the AD personally or, uh, or like that. Uh, where we at in the league? So we're still pretty far up there. I don't think too many people hit us. Nope, nobody hit us yet. So we're still up there. Um, and then these units is my AO. Right now, I'm not using attack bar booster yet because it's not too many uh, teams I come across that outspeeds me. Usually, I can lock them down with fire necro and then. Watermont goes, Fire Kitty goes after that, and pretty much groups everybody in. We wipe out one unit, and then I confuse a unit with uh, the Water Succubus, and then usually, usually if that unit has some something, uh, usually it's the unit that that the Fire Necro doesn't lock down, so uh, she confuse that unit, and if there is a unit that uh, has uh, buffs of things like that. Oh man, it's beautiful when they give us those buffs, and then we just go from there. She's such a great, she's such a great unit, and uh, being overshadowed by the fire succubus just because of what the fire succubus provides. But if you do have a water succubus and you don't have that fire succubus, and you're wondering, should I build her? Yes, because she was originally going to be my farmer until I poured the fire kitty. But I still use her as, I still use her as a. Uh, and my AO, which she really strong and she really shine. I mean, I had her three star for the longest in the AO. I just four starred her recently just so I, I can make sure she performs well. So let's go back to those creatures we haven't talked about. The Fire Pony. I was doing everything I could to really get it faster. But I'm not going to worry too much about that as of right now. Because we do need the Haze Gliss and that's Wrath. And we're not farming Wrath. So... Uh, we're not going to worry too much about that. Not until we hit that brick wall in the arena as we start climbing. And then we'll think about it based off of where our progression is at that time. Then we got our our water succubus, which don't have our best because we put our best on our uh, fire kitty. But she's also running a life steal in a broken set because we just didn't have a good enough strength glyph to replace this glyph here so we just ran with that and it works for me she does her she does her job pretty decently and then our water monk which we also want to get a little faster but not that important just because we run in precision and haste and we're not farming for pre farming for precision and haste but uh we can see where I'm lacking in the haste department uh, because we just don't have the glyphs yet. But soon enough, we'll get there. And we just pretty much want him with some decent accuracy, decently fast, so he can land his debuff as best as possible. We got him at 64%. We want to shoot a little higher, make sure he lands his debuff because sometimes he does miss. And that's just not cool. And who else we got here? I think. Oh, yeah, for our AD. Uh, one of my favorite units when I was first starting starting the game, uh, the uh, Air uh, Spirit Fox. Really good unit. Has 
it feels feels like two different roles has utility with the shield that it casts on third as well as saboteur uh, sab uh saboteur effects with the aoe sleep as well as uh speed de uh debuff that it has on the second skill so pretty powerful pretty powerful unit I make sure it's really tanky. I mean, it does tank fights really, really well for me. I have situations in the game where all my units was dead, and this is the last unit alive, and it pretty much tanked th its way through to the victory because it rolled shield on the first skill, and I couldn't ask for anything better than that. Um, I don't really use it much now since my team's focusing on different things, and I got so many other units that kind of has better utility for what I need, but it does a decent job on my AD, so that's why I have it there. It's just to make sure if uh, the enemy gets just down to the nitty gritty and doesn't have much left to go on, that it can probably push me through. And um, I guess it does, at least when I tested it out against myself, it did a pretty good job there. So well, let's move on. So let's talk about the guild, the guild, the guild. So you see here we're currently uh level twenty seven in the main guild. Uh and for you guys that don't know, we are two guilds strong right now. In the second guild we are level twenty four. Zodiac Prime is the main guild and Zodiac Gemini is the second guild. And um uh, Right now, I don't like the state that the guilds are in as far as this quest goes, and it's becoming a lot of confusion with our guild uh, as a whole. And uh, once the developers do something about that, uh, we'll definitely be in a better position to move forward because we got people that want to do the quest, and we got people, including myself, that don't want to do it. It's like I would like, I would love to really do the quest, but it's it is just too much. Where too, where too many people have to fork over so much, so much of their crystals just to get the quest to even start because we have so many people that is not contributing. And then I don't blame those people for not contributing, but we have to work as a guild. At, we have to work as a group and a unit as a whole. So if you're not helping everybody, then we just don't need you. And then I'm not liking to have to keep booting people out for something silly as a guild quest. Um, so please, if you are watching, uh, Ubisoft, change it because we are not the only ones that's suffering. It's hard to even recruit people because they don't want to join guilds that doing guild quests because it's just stupid right now. And, um, I'm sure, I'm sure if the rewards are better, it can be the same rewards, just more in the guild and in, in to start these quests, um, either lower the cost or remove it completely. Because that is utter BS and I cannot sugarcoat it any more than that. But um, that's kind of where we are as far as guilds go. Um, we'll probably be looking to recruiting again soon because we just need to uh, fill these numbers up, get us a solid core team. And once we get some of the things sorted out, we'll be working on our so third. So I guess uh, that's the basis of everything that's pr uh, been going on with my account as far as the guild. And kind of where uh, where we are. So, in conclusion, moving forward, I want to get as strong as I can. Hopefully, we get some information about free glyph removal, and we get a consistent date for it. Ho and hopefully on a Saturday, because that random Friday they threw it in on us was was terrible. It was terrible. I think it, the only people that benefited from that was the people that's been playing uh, the beaters. The people that was playing before the game was globally released. I think they're the only people that really benefited from that. And maybe that was done for them, so that was fine too, because I figured that was like really early. It was nothing I can do. I didn't really have any crystals, and I didn't really have any glyphs at that time to really work on either. So I didn't even I didn't even utilize that day. I just checked it up as a loss. But now that, you know, I've been farming, most of us have been farming, we've been waiting, we've been begging. But the worst thing, the worst thing that can happen is they wait until like three days before they're going to put it out 
and then put it into the events tab, like, oh, well, free glyph removal is coming up, and now people aren't ready for it. This is some information that maybe they can post in their Discord, let us know, like, a week or two in advance, like, yo, free uh, uh, glyph removal is coming up, you guys get ready for it. So people can stop leveling glyphs or, uh, or things like that, stop working on things, and start farming up the crystals so they can be prepared to level and level the glyphs on uh, free grip removal and be able to test out things, especially some of us that's a little further in the game that's working off of glyphs that's 13, that's plus 13 or even plus 16. It's like to meet the the requirements of the uh, glyphs that our creatures currently have on them. We want to be able to push it that hard, and, and it costs so much to level glyphs, like. It's really expensive, so you can burn through your crystals just like that. I'm talking about a million crystals just off of progressing one unit alone, and I'm barely at 2.6, so two units there, and that's it, and all of my crystals is gone. So that's that's just kind of my personal gripe, and I'm sure other people may agree and everything, and... Um, and it's kind of it's kind of difficult trying to you know just push the glyphs into that next stage. Or some glyphs I want to level up further and everything. I kind of got like my own template of leveling glyphs. Sometimes I break the rule myself just to get the best stats out of it, out of it I can. Just because I just didn't have the glyphs to replace the ones that I had on currently. Well, um, but I'm starting to work towards that. Maybe I can improve better, and we'll see once the glyph removal comes. I'm not going to change anything on my account until then. So, once that happens, hopefully I have enough decent glyphs that I can re-glyph my units and be able to go directly into Strift 10 and move forward from there. And I'll probably just farm that for two to three weeks and then start working on Wrath and try to move forward from there. And just based off of whatever goes on in my account, see how my arena doing, see how the, the full autos are doing, and whatever else may to come at that time. But... This is quite a long video, uh, and uh, I appreciate you guys for your time, for everybody that stuck through it, and uh, this is the Gamer Dude signing out. I know I didn't explain everything that I wanted to, but maybe we can do that in the next month's video, but until then, see you in the next progression. Deuces.